it's been several months since I've uh, put up any videos. I went to Italy, and when I got back, you know, well, I don't know, life is just busy. So it's hard for me to get out to the shop. But I've been at it here a little bit lately. Uh, a little while back, I went hunting on eBay, and I found a whole pack here of uh, mandrels. Some of these were uh, commercially produced, but a lot of them were like shop made, but you know, they seem like pretty decent ones. Whole selection of sizes here. I think I might have paid $20 or $30 maybe or something like that. In fact, there was even some more. Yeah, in fact, here they were here. Uh, these are threaded ones or something. I don't know. They're kind of, you know, the least desirable of the whole pile. Anyway, there's those. Put them back in the drawer here. And I also I found myself a, a lathe dog. I don't remember what I paid for that, but not much. I need one that's a little bit smaller. I might, uh, I don't know, build myself a pattern, something similar to this, and maybe I'll play around with making some cores, and I can just put a smaller size core into this this shape. Probably cheaper to do that than to uh, hunt down more of them. Those things go for $25 or more. I think I got a pretty decent deal on that one, five, ten bucks. But I've been working on another pattern here lately. I got uh, this here. I'm gonna try to build myself a steady rest because I just can't bring myself to spend $200 on on the original Atlas lay, uh, lay steady rest. I've got a couple of little issues with this pattern here. I, these little pieces right here, they're considerably skinnier than the rest of this. So if we pour metal into here, or when it flows here, it's gonna freeze off and then you're gonna get shrink distortions. And I need to I need to add another piece out here a little bit to bolt to the ways. And of course you see I chipped out a bunch of the wood, but I can fix all that. So we got a little bit more work on this. Evil Twin X, I believe you need one of these. If you do, let me know. Uh, I can probably get you a rough casting, or I don't know. Maybe when I finish mine, I can finish yours for you too, if you want. Uh, give me a, give me a little call her back, I guess. Anyway, oh, what else have I been up to? Uh, a couple weeks ago, I went up to uh, Sunset Foundry in uh, Valley Springs. Free plug for those guys, and. Uh, I dropped off the hand wheel pattern, so it's probably going to cost me about $25 a piece for the hand wheel castings. Uh, they give me a pretty good deal because I'm not picky about like when it gets done, so they can do it, just mix it into whatever jobs they have going on. Uh, if anybody ever needs iron castings, it's pretty reasonable. We're out here in California, so. Uh, what else? Oh. Bought a Kurt Vice. I'll uh, I'll probably go over and shoot a little. Or excuse me, it's not a Kurt Vice. <laughs> it's a clone of a Kurt Vice, yeah. and that's a very important distinction. <laughs> uh, having a little issue with it. There's supposed to be thrust needle bearing on the screw, and uh, there is no needle bearings, and there's no bearings at all. In fact. Kind of going around with shards a little bit right now, but hopefully they'll uh, they'll make things right here. Uh, if not, I may just hunt up a way to put my own thrust bearing in there. But at any rate, uh, other than that, vice seems like it's fairly all right. Price was right. I think to have it shipped here was uh, about two hundred bucks. Alright everybody, this is advice. I don't know how well, yeah, I guess you can see in here. Okay, see this right here? That's the, uh, uh oh, better not lose that. That's my lock ring. This is the spacing, or spacer that's in here. That's supposed to be a bearing.
according to their advertising this is supposed to be bearing fits up inside of here and that lowers you know the amount of effort you got to put into uh, to clamping the vise you see how that fits in there right so I mean yeah, it's a little bit loose in that hole but I'm pretty sure I can take this spacer off and I can go find a thrust bearing that will fit here in this size but uh, I don't know I sure hope the manufacturer over here makes, makes good on what they have sold me I, I guess they're not the manufacturer they're the, the seller they don't build these things they make them in China for as little as they can you know afford to spend oh sorry for the extreme close-up here on the overarm um, other issue nothing really huge I suppose I mean I bought it because it was cheaper but every every corner that was on this thing and I mean on the jaws and down inside of here and air, air, just everywhere there were just burrs on everything so if you ever get one of these just expect that you're gonna have to take it apart and do all the finishing work that that you know they should have done but you know I'm okay with that half an hour of work to save myself a couple hundred dollars that's not a big deal um, the other thing it's a little bit bigger than than the burrs see this little mark right here there's supposed to be a zero mark right here so you can read the graduations on on this you know the degrees over here on this this thing but they never bothered to stamp that so I guess I'm gonna have to put that on there somehow too uh, I'll have to take this thing off here and off the bed and set it on there and Oh, tram in the the vise while it's sitting on this plate. They got key plugs on this thing here, and boy, they fit pretty good. That's not even bolted down, but it's that part they did a pretty decent job on. There's almost no movement there. So I don't know. Maybe it's better that I put my zero mark in once I got the vise trammed, you know, and then it'll be right on for my machine because you know who knows how much care they're going to take over in China. Oh, uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Here's my other issue. So, this is my one inch arbor for the brown and sharp mill. And this cutter, let's see if I can find something where you can see it. You can see the keyway here. It's a uh, oh, quarter inch. It's got a little bit of, you know, it's got a little bit of play there, but that's a quarter inch key. Okay, that keyway though, I sure don't fit into this thing here. So I should have probably measured it, but I thought it was well, maybe it's five thirty seconds. Nope. Okay, maybe it's an eighth. Now eighth goes in, but it's really loose, sloppy, you know. Let's see if we can find a better spot on this key. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. That's not very good. Most cutters this size, I'm pretty sure, have quarter-inch keyways. So I may see about taking this thing and uh, getting a quarter-inch keyway cut into it. I'll probably have to. I got to find somebody with a bridge to to do that. I think. Oh, I don't know. This one looks like it was cut with a with a wheel cutter. Maybe I can take it over to my buddy Irving's house, cut it over there. Um, the only thing is, I don't know if this is hard, but if the dimples from the ball peen hammer, somebody, see all these dimple marks they've been putting into this thing? Somebody in the past was using a ball peen hammer to, to jar the taper loose instead of putting a punch in the back and driving it loose. Uh, I don't know. That's an an annoyance, but I mean, I don't know. It's probably not really messing things up too bad. Maybe when I'll take it out and maybe I might try to touch it up just a little bit with a file or something to take the high points off. 
the main thing is that it's more or less concentric and that the the key fits good in the slot and into the cutter but that certainly isn't going to happen at the moment is it what else we got left to do here oh i bought some of these uh you know, wire wheels and stuff i want to there's a lot of rust kind of on the bed here it's not it's not eating into it really bad but i'm sure there's probably a little bit of pitting here but i want to get most of that off there just to make sure it's uh you know nice and flat when i put my vice on there i'm not you know any less accurate than what it should be there's one more repair other than the flywheels i gotta remember to do i believe it's down here I don't know if you can really see this ear right here is that the one i believe it's that one but that ear is broken <laughs> it's held in there with the screw the screw that's holding this piece on is holding it in there but i got to get that thing out of there which means i got to take this whole little gearbox off um uh, i'm not sure what all we gotta get let's have a look up underneath here right there is that the one that's broken? Oh, sorry about that. Well, anyway. There's one screw on that side. Yep, and another screw on the other side. So I think if I take those four screws off, there's a U-joint on the shaft that this thing here, this gearbox is, you know, there's a shaft back there. U-joints on that, so I should be able to swing it over and get it out. Uh, oh, in fact, I can even I can just unbolt the U-joint right there. And just lay the shaft down. Probably I, I need to probably take that shaft out and clean up everything really good in there too. Haven't really gotten into that yet. Once I got the hand wheels done and that, I mean, I could I could operate the mill manually. That's that's the power feed drive, right? That's what drives the table. Uh, I would rather not put it under power with a broken you know mounting point on it uh, probably it wouldn't hurt nothing but who knows they may have been running it that way anyhow anyway after that we're ready to go uh, I got a new plug wired onto this thing so I, I can power it up I mean the mill runs Kind of a little funky setup with his. I know I showed you before, but it's got this transmission, old uh, 1930s automotive transmission up here. <laughs> so, uh, and reverse is one of the speeds. <laughs> here's the here's the plate. First gear is 180 RPM. Second is 240. Uh, third is 320 reverse is 280 so that's like not even in order there <laughs> um, and if you put it in back gear you get first is 60 second is 80 third is 120 so and then reverse is 180 uh, although when you put it in reverse of course the rotation switches <laughs> but uh, we, we can reverse the we can reverse the motor with that little switch right there. So, I don't know. 